Hi there, it's Donovan. I'd consider myself a kid at heart. Granted, I still am a kid, but deep down, underneath all those bad shroomatic jokes I'll be making today, I still crave for those magnificent, wondrous feelings we've all had as kids. The times when you're so carefree, so curious about the world, that everything just fades away. That is where I think Mario shines. Mario, too many, was their first gaming introduction. The imaginative, fun for all adventures in the Mushroom Kingdom was what drew many towards his games. In 2006, Nintendo released New Super Mario Bros. for the Nintendo DS. After a long renaissance of 3D Mario, there wasn't another traditional 2D Mario game in 14 years when this game released. So let me tell you, when New Super Mario Bros. hit the DS, it was a phenomenon. Everyone had to get this game, it was like a requirement for all kids. Selling just a minuscule 30 million copies, it is the most successful mainline Mario game since the original. It's a title that has impacted so many people, and lots of them happen to be my brain rotted generation. This was the first video game I've ever played. So many fond memories of replaying the same levels over and over again because I thought you were supposed to select new game every time you played. I'm surprised I got accepted to college. This was my first introduction to the joy of video games, showing me that you can escape reality and shrooms can be really cool. When it released, it was allotted as an amazing return of form and the pinnacle of 2D platformers. It was a game that not only brought in new players, but reconnected with old ones. 2D Mario needed to change, and yet, New Super Mario Bros. was still able to catch that youthful magic. 2D Mario was back, and better than ever. Which is what everyone would have said if this was the only game. After the staggering success of the original, Nintendo had to make not one, but four more sequels in the so-called New series. Wii, 2, U, and Luigi U are expertly crafted and refined games and still can be a blast to play through. I've had my fun times with them, and I'm sure many have too. But they all just felt too similar, too boring, too safe. I bet you most normal people can't even tell the difference between the games. No, this is not New Super Mario Bros. U, it's actually Super Mario Run! It could be argued that this series tainted the Mario brand, where at first glance his latest games could be seen as safe, boring cash grabs. But what's surprising is that, as bland and not new as the new games were, a lot of what makes Mario Wonder so special can be traced back to those games. It's just that they made it painfully hard to see those glimmers of creativity. What Wonder does best is embrace the changes. Mario had to evolve, grow up, once again to somehow reclaim that old magic that he once had. And somehow, despite so much criticism regarding modern 2D Mario, Wonder was able to bring us back to when 2D Mario was fresh, youthful, and creative. One of Nintendo's core strengths is their belief that everyone is a game designer. Yes, even little Timmy creating those Mario Maker levels. He had a part in this game too. When Super Mario Maker 2 released, many were led to assume that it'd be the death of 2D Mario. What's the point of making a new one when you can just get all the creative courses you want from Mario Maker? But Nintendo was not afraid at all, because, well, I think we can do better. However, when we play the posted courses, and let's keep this here, some of them were not very good. <laughs> The development team, likely due to criticism of the new games, set out for a new direction, creating a Mario game full of surprises. What once made Mario creative and fun, such as hitting an item box and receiving a mushroom, or taking a pipe to warp somewhere else, that kid-like discovery had all vanished. It had all become the status quo. What new Super Mario Bros. failed to do was elicit those mind-blowing surprises because, well, they were all just the new Mario game and you know what to expect from a Mario game. They had all staff members come up with something, any zany idea on a sticky note for consideration. All right, can everyone put their sticky note up on the wall? Nintendo made it a point to not force a deadline on the developers, a stark contrast to the rest of the industry, giving them all the time in the world to make something great. Over 2,000 crazy ideas were considered. Some ranged from Mario surfing through a level or Mario having an oversized head being eaten away or even a live-action Mario progressing through the course, humming the music and sounds. Yeah, they were definitely cooking something special with this game. Funny enough, it was the legendary composer, Koji Kondo, who suggested that idea. On one sticky note, there was nothing but the words, A WONDER QUIZ STARTS. What? What are we supposed to get from that in a Mario game? 
All he did is write a wonder quiz starts on a sticky note without any other specific info. Do you think we can call this a good idea? The team wanted to somehow incorporate these wacky events while still keeping a sense of trust in the player that yes, this is still a 2D side-scroller. One idea was to twist and bend the warp pipes, something we've never seen before in a Mario game but still can feel true to the series. And that's when they created the Wonder Effect, where they'd put all these unconventional ideas into this mysterious phenomenon. That's how Nintendo wanted Mario to grow up, by staying fresh. Don't judge a book by its cover, but how can we not? The visuals in this game are absolutely gorgeous. Gone are the days of the expressionless, saturated look of the new Super Mario Bros. Here everything is just so full of life with animations bursting a personality. Mario for once actually smiles when he jumps, even runs like it's a Sonic game. Sometimes when he enters a warp pipe, he quickly snatches his hat as it's left behind. When he crouches, he curls up into a ball. When he transforms with power-ups, you get a more robust flair. When you get close to enemies or kill them, they all react accordingly. Enemies actually attack Mario instead of running into him. Compare these animations with New Super Mario Bros. and it's night and day. I never realized how soulless Mario was in those games until a side-by-side -side comparison. Mario going through a pipe in the new series looks hilariously terrible compared to Wonder. Out of all characters, Mario's making Oblivion NPCs look real. He wasn't as bad as Pokemon eating though, that's a real low. If we want to keep comparing, the wait times of Wonder and U Deluxe when you die have been astronomically reduced, which keeps the pace going. Colors have this pastel look that makes the Flower Kingdom feel more dreamlike. Everything looks super familiar, but with the new coat of paint, it makes it look more cartoony than its predecessors, and I'm all for it. Kinda reminds me of how Mario is illustrated or drawn, and I love it. The visual overhaul was definitely the biggest contributor to separating Wonder from the new series. If Wonder had been the exact same game, but still used the same art style of New Super Mario Bros., the game would have been turned down by many as soon as it was shown. Hell, if the game was called New Super Mario Bros. Wonder, people would have shunned it away immediately. That's how badly people wanted Mario to evolve. A simple art style change was enough to enthrall the fans. Heck, this is one of the best looking games on Nintendo Switch, and this is just the first surprise of many. The audio design does wonders to freshen up the feel of 2D Mario. The new series has been using the exact same sound effects and even the same musical pieces for every release. People say it's all about consistency, but this is just ridiculous. To once again deviate from the old, Wonder brings a plethora of fun and unique sounds and refines a ton too. Jumps sound more acoustic, ground pounds got more of a kick to it, pipes sound softer and have an echo, and so much more. And yes, of course the soundtrack of a Mario game is great. Just feels so fun and whimsy to play in. The overworld theme is such a vibe. <laughs> The boss theme is also quintessential Bowser music. We may have lost our ba ba, but let's leave that as a staple of the new series. Something we have to mention is the voices. Charles Martinet, the man behind the iconic voices of the Mario cast, retired his role during the making of Wonder. His final role was voicing the Italian man and the Mario's dad in the Super Mario Brothers movie. His babies were passed on to a new actor, Kevin Afghani. 
At first when trailers were releasing for Wonder, I didn't even realize the different in voices. At first I thought, well these are all probably newly recorded lines and Charles must have had a new direction this time. But as I heard the lines more and more, yeah, he did sound different. Well, it didn't matter because Kevin Afghani does a great job as Mario and Luigi as he still gives the Plumber Boys their fun, goofy quips and great wahoos. Woohoo! Ha ha! Yeah! Woohoo! Woohoo! Ha ha! Yup! 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 Yee! Woohoo! Ha ha! Woohoo! Woohoo! Mario lives and dies by his controls, and to no one's surprise, he feels great in this game. Some have even noted that he feels significantly better than his new series outings. For example, in the new series, when you stop moving, Mario takes significantly longer to come to a complete stop compared to Wonder, making him feel more snappy now. And again, hats off to the animation team because they certainly pack more of a punch this time, given the illusion that he feels different. Also, do you notice that there's no longer a timer? Such a simple cut that can have drastic changes. No longer are you rushed to meet the flagpole, you can now explore the courses to your heart's content, and I love it. You now have the time to take in your surroundings, find every nook and cranny there is to find in the more detailed courses of wonder. It's a surprise to be sure. Speaking of surprises, if New Super Mario Bros. had made Mario so uninspired and predictable, then Wonder's ultimate challenge was to reignite imagination back into 2D Mario. People praise Super Mario Bros. 3 and Super Mario World for their endless secrets and timeless surprises, sparking the imaginations of many with their tight level design and their creative worlds. Today, Super Mario Bros. Wonder is being compared to the likes of these legends. No longer are we traversing the same Mushroom Kingdom for the millionth time, but the Flower Kingdom. A land of wacky sights and sounds and... What the hell is that? Get close and... I'm over here stroking my d- Wonder what you taste like. These little guys are sprinkled all throughout the adventure, spouting words of encouragement, being creepy, or killing themselves. The original idea was to have live commentary play for the whole game, but many questions arose from the team asking, who's doing this commentary? It just didn't feel right in the context of the Mario world. In fact, there is even a Tessundre option to the commentary, where one appears to be harsh on the outside, but occasionally shows a softer, more affectionate side. It's not like I like you or anything kind of vibe which is a little crazy for a Mario game, but these ideas still live on through the talking flowers and our fun surprises throughout our journey. Something else that's surprising that really shouldn't be is this setup of the game. No, it's not like the soap opera like Super Mario Run, unfortunately. Bowser's still the main villain, but this time, he has transformed himself into a giant flying castle. Oh, the wonders of steroids. Peach isn't even kidnapped here, so that's a plus to the story. No, because this time, she joins our main cast and crew. The character variety in Wonder is off the charts. Luigi, Toad, Toadette, and even Nabbit make their comebacks. Sorry Peachette lovers, but there's other Rule 34 things to draw in this game. Oh and Daisy makes her playable debut in a mainline Mario game, which makes it an instant 100 on Metacritic. It's awesome that all these characters are here, but they no longer retain their defining attributes. Toad is no longer super fast, Luigi isn't slippery, Peach isn't floaty, they all feel and play the same way as Mario, which streamlines the whole experience. If you're a baby, you have access to the Yoshis who will not take any power-ups or damage, but can still flutter jump and eat anything that gets in your way. And if you're a fucking fetus, you have the god among men, Nabbit, the ultimate baby mode. It's a shame that there's essentially no Yoshi riding in the game, unless you're playing as him, or have a friend playing as him. But that's alright, because you can play whoever to your heart's content. And we have Prince Florian! He's there, but characters are nothing without a playground to utilize them. There are over 100 distinct courses spread throughout 8 different areas. While they could all still be identified as your typical grass world, desert world, lava world, and more, Wonder makes great efforts to distinguish the Flower Kingdom from the Mushroom Kingdom with their elaborate backgrounds, unique enemies, and memorable set pieces. In New Super Mario Bros., World 1 would always have the same background, the same kinds of enemies, the same music, etc. It didn't do much to make it feel bigger and more grand. With Wonder, World 1 is the Pipe Rock Plateau. At the beginning, it has a more grassy aesthetic, but gradually, you reach the base of the plateau which has a more warmer color palette. There's even a subsection which takes you to a more jungle-like area. And eventually, you'll be climbing up the mountain and then hitting the clouds. All in the first world, by the way. 
within courses, you'll see that the variety of set pieces really keep the fun going. You have some speed runs, foreground and background changes stolen right from Kirby Triple Deluxe, there's even a silhouette course ripped from Donkey Kong Country Returns, all still in the first world FYI. There's secret exits littered about, some can be really tricky to find but are cleverly hinted at, making you say the words, Wow, I'm stupid. There's just so much variety that I can't cover them all. World 2 is Fluff Puff Peaks, which doesn't even start off with a course, but a house that gives you a free wonder seed. Oh, wow, that's fun. But other than that, you start off with a more icy theme, but soon you ascend to the heavens and are greeted with more challenging platforming and bottomless pits. There's ice thrown at you, blizzards blowing you away, shifting platforms, growing platforms, it's all a blast. World 3 is the Shining Falls and has a darker, cave-like palette. You go about more challenge-like courses in order to prove your worth to obtain the royal seed of the area. World 4, Sunbaked Desert, your typical desert area but given more flair and personality. There's a whole castle you have to take on and with it comes more maze-like and puzzle-solving course design. World 5, The Fungi Mines. With its green undertones, this is a nasty, dangerous place with traps and secrets all around and a whole lot of poison and goo. World 6, The Deep Magma Bog is your typical difficult lava world, but with a couple cards up its sleeve. Treacherous caverns, tight lava corridors, rolling platforms, disappearing platforms, it can get ass clenching down there. And then there's the Petal Isles, an area on the map that connects all the worlds together. It has sort of a beach aesthetic, and yes, that means water levels are back. Can't totally break away from your roots, huh? And then obviously there's the final world, which is inside Bowser. Pause. And if you can find all the entrances, there are highly difficult courses in this special world. All of these will take dozens of lives away if you're not careful. They aren't suicide inducing like the lost levels, they're the fun, let's say Dark Souls kind of fun. The courses, or just Mario in general, feel so fun, so expertly crafted when Mario, the controls, and the level design perfectly complement each other and give you that awesome satisfaction when performing actions. Bull Rush Express is a perfect example. It's so fun linking actions together and barely scraping by. Oh hell yeah! Harkening back to Super Mario Odyssey, the purple coins make their return as a special currency in the Flower Kingdom. But the more special variant of them is the 10 Flower Coin. These act essentially as the star coins in New Super Mario Bros. and are needed for 100% completion. At first, I did not know this. I just thought it'd give you 10 flower coins and were completely optional, like the big coins in Super Mario Maker. But nope, they are as special as star coins. I know I wasn't the only one first confused at this. Had they given them a different design and name, this could have been avoided, but it's whatever. Also, the process of collecting these have been made much easier, maybe to a detriment. Once you've collected it, you've permanently collected it. If you die even after collecting it, you still technically got it. Back then, you die after getting a star coin, you lose it and have to work to get it back. But here, try anything and if it works, it works. Sure, it made my playthrough much less stressful, but it also made it less challenging. There are poplin shops all around the world where you can buy some extra power-ups, badges, and standees. More on those later. Throughout the world, you won't find just regular courses. There are search parties. Wow, I'm stupid. stupid. Break times. Nintendo really loves reminding players to stop playing their games. Tune levels with fun callbacks. Wiggler races. Knockout arenas. Ooh. And there's badge challenges. Something completely new and fresh to the Mario formula are badges, additional powers or assistance you can give yourself. You can choose to either be the biggest cheater in the world or completely skip these and not play with them at all. If you do choose to play with them, their benefits can be a lot of help. The parachute cap is the first badge you'll get and it's one of the best. Think the paraglider in Zelda and it's helpful useless. Wall climb jump gives you a second wall jump. Dolphin Kick makes water levels slightly more playable. Crouching High Jump is just like the jump in Super Mario Bros. 2. Boosting Spin Jump gives you extra height while spinning in the air, which is awesome. The spin is already a great mechanic from the new series, and it's just been made better with this. Also, the Grapple Vine, a grappling hook in a Mario game, that's freaking awesome. It sometimes doesn't like to work, but when it does, it really connects. Those are some of the action badges, one of three categories. 
Boost badges provide more gameplay assistance to players. The coin magnet is good for you when you're poor. Sensor detects significant items nearby, which is super helpful for finding missed items. And safety bounces for your little brother. And then there's expert badges. These are the badges you'd use to impress the ladies. Yeah, you know, I can essentially play the entire game with my eyes closed, you know. I'm just Super Sigma like that. Anyways, have you seen Bowser's feet? Like, come on, would you actually play invisible for the entire game? Um, have you seen my basement? I'm clearly mentally stable. To obtain some of the badges, you must play through the badge challenge to prove your worth. You cannot lose any lives here, so experiment to your heart's content. Further in the game, you'll get more challenges that test your mastery of the badge, and some can get quite difficult. They all culminate in the final, final badge marathon. Oh my god. Oh no. That is evil. Ooh. Oh my god. No way. No way. Did I get all the coins? Please tell me I did. Wow, I've made it through this whole Mario video without mentioning the new power-ups you'll find in the Flower Kingdom. The headliner is the Elephant Fruit. With the swing of your trunk and the slam of your dump truck, you are an absolute unit. Take in some water to grow some secrets. The bubble flower, blow some bubbles and just annihilate your foes because oh my god. <laughs> you can even jump on your bubbles giving yourself some extra height and can make for some really cool chain sequences if you're skilled enough. The drill mushroom, burrow your way into the ground or the ceiling to find secrets and hop out for some extra height. And yes, the fire flower is always here to heat things up. Combine your power-ups and your badges to become a platforming powerhouse. But there's just one thing, one huge thing I've been saving for last that defines this game. The Wonder Flower. Get ready for the trip of a lifetime because the Wonder Flower is the heart and soul of this Mario adventure. If there was nothing memorable in New Super Mario Bros., the team made it their mission to implant Mario Wonder into your mind even after you're done playing. I think Nintendo got tired of the Mario is a shroom addict jokes and just actually let him hit this time. The whole team probably took a shroom trip to immerse themselves in the shoes of Mario. All of those sticky note ideas were eventually transformed into wonder flowers that changed up the gameplay in ways no other 2D Mario game has. I'm still waiting for my wonder flower suggestion. There's just an unbelievable amount of zany ideas in this game, it just keeps going. And the joy of it is that you have no idea what the game will throw at you. Mario's getting stale, my ass, because his cake is looking super edible. What am I looking at? Is this what shrooms feel like? The first wonder flower is the moving pipes one, the one that blew everyone away in the first trailer. In the very second course, they hit us with one of the best, the Piranha Plant Parade. They all sing and they're so adorable, like what? There's a King Boo opera too. There's the bull rush that keeps you on your toes. Shadow Mario especially keeps you running. The ceiling falls onto you. You're suddenly floating, avoiding lightning. I swear I was looking up inflation in the economy. You become a rolling ball, a wall magnet slime, a weird super high jumpy thing, a Goomba, Snake's final smashes in the game, a jump disco party, a fucking quiz like good morning, a giant blizzard, Rolling snowball, bubble platforms, free falling. These terrifying eating things, a whole top down perspective change, super unique. Rollerblading Koopas with illuminating ramps, a whole battleship, North Korea's missile testing. Please do not turn on the lights, I don't want to know what this entails. They all keep you on your toes, making you wonder what effect will take place next. What wild trip is the game going to take you on? This isn't just normal boring ass Mario. Mario's finally a man and he accidentally ate the wrong gummy worm. Oh, no! 
you were high or drunk or both while playing this game, please tell me how it was. I'm genuinely interested. Are some of the effects kind of lame? Yeah, some can be just whatever. The Falling Stars one is definitely one where you just shut your brain off, while others can bring quite the challenge, especially in the special world. And others are just simple fun surprises. The Wonder Flower was the much needed adrenaline rush 2D Mario needed. When playing this game, you can't just help but smile through your whole playthrough. And some of those smiles and bursts of laughter are certainly due to local co-op. 80% of my Mario Wonder playthrough was with local co-op. Most of it was with my brother, while other times it was with a whole group of four. Thanks to Nintendo Switch, I can take the adventure wherever I go, and I will defend tabletop mode to death. That mode is a game changer when playing with friends on the go. After we all reluctantly took our single Joy-Cons, we set out to beat Bowser's scaly ass. This was even one of my friends' first Mario experiences, and I'd say it was a blast for him. New Super Mario Bros. Wii was revolutionary when it simply added 4 player co-op. The memories, the cool stunts, and the stupidity of your friends brought that game to life. And those feelings are no different in Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Oh my. <laughs> Messing around, getting closer to achieving our objective, experiencing the unexpected is so fun with your friends at your side. Is Mario Wonder perfectly serviceable when played alone? Of course it is. I just prefer experiencing the joy with others. Let me tell you, even if we all died, even if we just wasted 100 lives on one level, we still laughed our asses off to our terrible platforming skills and we cheered like madmen when someone performed an impossible task. I took my Switch to gym class when there was a substitute and we were the most loud and annoying people there that day. This game created some long-lasting gaming memories with so many people, and that's just locally, not accounting online play. Wait, 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 wait for it. Ah! This looks so weird. What were the devs thinking? <laughs> they got really horny. Their lives. Good idea. We're leaving. We're stuck in your drop. <laughs> your money is gone. My wallet. You had like 500. My wallet doesn't exist. No, you had, had the like max. 500. Yeah, no. The last time we played, I had the max. And then he nine, went nine, to the minimum. Oh, and, and then you spent 300 on a stupid power up that you never used. <laughs> yeah, what was it? Pirates of the Caribbean. Pirates of the Caribbean. No! I'm, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. Come back. What the? I just killed myself. No! <laughs> that was divine intervention. I couldn't throw anything. God said, kill yourself. <laughs> no. Nice, you got it. Okay, we just need to make it to the end. Oh, you guys get stars. Oh. Survive, survive, survive. Let's go! Yo! Yo! All coins. Okay, wait, now we, now we just need to hit the top. Oh, 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 Us two women are tops, aren't <laughs> you? And your little, you your little shroom <laughs> ain't never reaching us. <laughs> that is recording. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. It's all cut out. <laughs> you know? That's what he wants you to be. <laughs> That's the, what I want you The to power be. of editing. However, there are a couple gripes we have with the multiplayer. In New Super Mario Brothers, when you'd get far enough in players, the camera would zoom out to account for everyone. But in Mario Wonder, the camera stays locked to the player that has the crown. The camera doesn't zoom out, which means the other players can lose track of themselves and accidentally die because of the camera. That can be quite annoying and even frustrating when you're not all in sync and can ruin a platforming run. And unfortunately, it seems like some of the Wonder effects were really made to be played by one person. Sometimes it just feels like one player is in control while the others have to sit back because the camera only focuses on one person, even during wonder effects. For example, when you're this jumping thingy, the secondary players will always fall behind or even die if they're not in sync, which can be annoying. Or the rolling ball where it seems like only one player is getting all the action while the rest sit back and do nothing. Also in the new series, players could jump on each other to give them an extra boost. That was removed in wonder probably to prevent cheesing the game. And you cannot hurt your friends. Does this make multiplayer more playable? Yes. But come on, we all love to piss each other off sometimes. Some great memories have been made by simply killing each other in the new series. 
Your friend gave you a minor inconvenience? Bad mistake. Scorch them alive. In Wonder, you can't kill each other very easily. Was the decision for the best? Yeah, probably. But just what if friendly fire was enabled? What funny scenarios would players get themselves in? Guess we'll never know. When you die, you become a ghost and must float to a friend to be revived before losing a life. This makes it much harder to actually lose lives and kind of makes the game easier to cheese when in multiplayer. You can also put down standees which can be bought at poplin shops. These act as revival points for ghosts to float to if players aren't around them. But standees have a greater purpose when it comes to online play. If you decide to go online as you play, you'll be able to see live player shadows playing with you in real time. Though they aren't actually there, they're more so unobtrusive ghosts running alongside you. People have likened the online to that of Dark Souls. It makes the whole experience feel more like a tight-knit community, even when playing alone. No, for the last time, I am not schizophrenic. When it comes to the tight-knit community feeling, because you can't directly interact and kill each other, there's no option but to help your fellow peers. When you die, quickly fly to an online player or their standee for a revival. These things are super helpful and they kinda humble me a bit because without some, I would have had to restart from the beginning. <laughs> I love cheating. Oh, I love cheating. Thank you. Oh, oh, thank you, Toda. Players who placed the standee would receive hearts, thanking them for their placement. It's all love from here. You can send greetings and share items too. Placing standees in certain places to give your peers hints might be cheating. But it's all love from here, trust. You're just helping your fellow Mario players out on their adventure. It just makes the game feel more alive, more friendly, more connected. It gives me a warm feeling in my heart to know that I'm not the only one struggling here. Of course you can play with your specific friends too. Sadly, there's still live player shadows and visually don't look like real local co-op, which is a shame. These are my friends, real people I know. Wait. But you can still hop into what courses your friends are playing and even hit each other up for a speedrun. Even with its ups and downs, the multiplayer experience of Wonder makes the game feel more connected and more like a community. Before we get to the end of the game, there are a couple faults I'd like to mention that hold the game back. Firstly, probably its biggest fault is the bosses, or the lack thereof. Out of all the games to not include the Koopalings, it's this one? They were a cool return of form in New Super Mario Bros. Wii, but then they just kept returning to form. We got tired of them because they literally did the exact same game for three games in a row. So yeah, fuck the Koopalings, I never want to see them again. Fast forward to today. Where are the Koopalings? Bowser Jr. is still here and he's been taking some hits, making his fights fresh and dynamic. Oh my God. He's doing drugs! Why not give the Koopalings some hits too? Giving them all unique and zany abilities never seen in this series would have been perfect for them. Instead, it's only Bowser Jr. four times and this thing. Is this even considered a boss? You just run ahead and jump on a button. It's a complete joke. Maybe you can consider some of the Wonder Flowers to be bosses like King Boo, the Spike Statue, or Giant Smackerel, but I consider them more as special events than bosses. Also, some worlds don't even have ending bosses. You just go to a house and whoopee! The Royal Seed is here. Wow, thanks game. Probably the biggest fault of the game is when the wonder wears off. The game's been built on the unexpected and the surprises, so what happens when the surprises are no longer surprises? This may hurt replayability because you're no longer feeling that same sense of discovery since your first playthrough. So that wonder effect better have hit because if it didn't, well, I guess you're gonna have to deal with it. But it's not the biggest issue because it's a 2D Mario game. Of course it's endlessly replayable and it'll probably have the same lasting impact as classic Mario or even the likes of the new series in the present day. Also, can we ever get a Mario game without water courses, please and thank you? But in life, we focus on the negatives too much. Isn't life so much more enjoyable if we focus on the good? As I stated in the multiplayer section, playing with friends has created some lifelong gaming memories. Just having fun, succeeding and failing together was a blast, and it was all thanks to this cheerful little Mario game. Before this game was even announced, I was ecstatic about the thought of a new 2D Mario game. I'd play people's super worlds in Super Mario Maker 2 just to get that feeling I'm playing a new game. But when I finally got my hands on this, I was just blown away at how unique this Mario game was compared to the rest. 
At first, I was one of those people saying, there's no need for a new 2D Mario when we got Mario Maker. I'm glad they proved us all wrong. I was caught with surprise with the Piranha Plant Parade. Sheer confusion washed over my face when I transformed into cake. What the heck? <laughs> what? I'm a cake. I'm a cake. I did not see this one coming. The war flashbacks of the spring badge. Ugh. 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 Those stupid search parties. My amazement to the perspective changes. The whole badge marathon was such a gauntlet, but super fun to finally reach that flagpole. That last stretch with the invisibility was truly some ass clenching gameplay. The entire special world was a delight. And again, my friends and I dicking around was always great. And just the whole vibes of the game, man. I cannot help but smile throughout my entire playthrough. We're nearing the end of the video, so how about we reach the end of the game? The final course, Bowser's Rage Stage, is a culmination of wonder effects throughout the game and is a great showing of how far we've come. Unlike the other bosses, thankfully, the final boss is pretty fun and unique for the series as we have to time our jumps to the beat of the music to beat Bowser's ass. I got him. I got him. And with that, lesson learned, don't do drugs, kids. You might be completely wiped from the face of the universe if you do. How will Bowser recover from these wounds? I have no idea. You save Prince Florian's castle, and the entire Flower Kingdom. Just another Monday. But the fun ain't over yet. In order to achieve 100% completion, you must obtain all 10 Flower Coins, Wonder Seeds, Royal Seeds, Badges, and Standees. To get all the Standees, you have to purchase them, so I spent a good 30 minutes to an hour just grinding out purple coins on these few levels to finally complete my collection. Trust me, I'm mentally stable. As for the final badge, after completing the final final badge marathon, you are greeted with a final Poplin house. After going inside, you receive the Sound Off badge. A badge that harkened back to Kondo's original idea of a live action Mario making all the sound effects in the game. Oh my god. He made me schizophrenic. This is just dubbed. Oh. The devs just... They were just having a field day on this one. This was so worth it. And of course, it was Kondo himself that dubbed all the sounds. I bet he's also mentally stable. Many have allotted Super Mario Bros. Wonder to be the pinnacle of 2D platformers and have likened it to that of Super Mario Bros. 3 or Super Mario World. After the seemingly endless era of bland Mario, Wonder, along with Odyssey, were breaths of fresh air for the long-running franchise. Though extremely successful, it was clear that the new Super Mario Bros. series was holding the plumber back. Wonder was that creative burst we all were craving. It's what makes Mario truly thrive. His games are that of a toy box. So many things to play with, so many places your mind can take you. Mario Wonder was built on the basis of proving people wrong. Yes, there is still room for 2D Mario, and yes, Mario can still be creative. Even this old ass drug addict can somehow find ways to surprise us all, young and old. Wonder became the fastest selling Mario game at the time and went on to receive outstanding review scores. It won Best Family Game of 2023 and even ran for Game of the Year. In fact, both Zelda and Mario were up for grabs, reflecting 2017 when they were both up for the same title. Sadly, I don't think Wonder had a chance. The Game Awards has certain tastes, especially games that look and appeal to more prestigious Hollywood movies. So Mario definitely had a run for its money, but the 2D Mario comeback is still impressive. Wonder belongs on the same pedestal as games like Celeste, Sonic Mania, Rayman Legends, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, and even Super Mario World. 2D Mario, and it could be argued that the whole series at one point lost its way. It needed to redefine itself again grow up, but it seems that games like Odyssey, and especially Wonder, is bringing back that energetic, youthful pride back to Mario. 2D Mario is back, and I can't wait for another batch. Fight! 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 fight.